Lord Jesus, You are our Good Shepherd. And the bad shepherd the, is a wolf, a hireling who scatters the flock, Lord Jesus, but You call us to Yourself with Your voice, with Your goodness, and You feed us with Your sacred flesh. And we ask You, Father, to help us to increase our love and our devotion to Your Son, Jesus, this day, who is our Shepherd. Open up our hearts and our ears to hear what it is You wish us to hear in my voice to proclaim your praise. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. <clears throat> this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is what is now known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Every fourth Sunday of Easter is always Good Shepherd Sunday. We all know that there's three cycles of readings, and so over those three years, we just hear snippets of John chapter 10, which is the Good Shepherd passage. So this year we hear from uh, verses 11 through 18. So this week I was just, the whole week I just continued, just continuously reading John chapter 10 and just sitting with it and soaking in it. And something hit me differently as I sat and read John chapter 10 and invite you and encourage you to do the same this, this today or this upcoming week. And so, so just bear with me. Uh, I just want to read a little bit beyond what we heard, the, the snippet that we heard here at Holy Mass today. <clears throat> In verse 1, Jesus is saying, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. And the gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. That's 1 through 3, verse 7. So Jesus said to them again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. And all came, who came before me are thieves and robbers, and the sheep did not listen to him. Verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. And then I will go out and bring them to pasture. Verse 10, I came that they may have life, and have it more abundantly. The gate. Why does Jesus call himself the gate? I am the gate. I thought he's a good shepherd. Why is he calling himself the gate? Right? So it's important for us. He refers to himself as the gate more than eight times, or the sheepfold or the door, more than eight times in this small little chapter. <clears throat> Throughout all of the sacred scriptures, dating going all the way back into the Old Testament, so many of the greatest figures throughout all of the Old Testament were shepherds. Moses, Abraham, David were all shepherds in God's word. Moses was the shepherd of Jethro's flock. Abraham was a goat herder, and David was, was watching over his father's flock when Samuel came to anoint him with, and, and see his brothers. So Jesus, in a very particular way, is fulfilling this prophecy in, in recognizing that God, from the very beginning, was using this image as shepherds to show that his greatest of servants, his greatest of people, his greatest of leaders were all shepherds. So Jesus, the second person in the Most Holy Trinity, the Son of God, himself is not a literal shepherd. He's a literal carpenter, but he's not a shepherd, but he's a spiritual shepherd. He's a, a, a figurative shepherd of souls. He's a shepherd of souls. <clears throat> what does this have to do with the gate? The gate, Jesus says, I am the gate. Hang in here with me, right? This is the point. Okay, I, it's good. It gets good. At, at, least it's, at least it's good for me. I love it. So Jesus says, I am the gate. And often in that time of, of Jesus' era, in the time of, of shepherding and herding, and even today, really, in, in a culture that, that shepherds and herds and all that kind of thing, what, what the shepherd would do is they would build a rock wall. They would build it, you know, on their pasture, maybe two or three of them on their land, and they would build a little rock wall with all the field stones and all of that, and leave an opening for the sheep to go in, so that at night the sheep could be kept, kept safe. But what would the shepherd do? He would lay there in front of the doorway in this pen or this, uh, this rock wall of sorts. He would lay in, in the doorway, and he did that and slept there he did that in order to keep the sheep in. 
to make sure that they didn't escape because what would happen if they escaped? They would be torn up by savage beasts. So the shepherd was laying there, laying down his life, in order to keep the sheep, keep the lambs into the pen, but also at the same time, he was protecting them from predators. In case if, if a wolf or whatnot came to the pen, came to the doorway, came to the gate, came to the door of this pen, that he could fight them off so that he could, he could scare them away with a shepherd's staff. And so this image of the, the, the pen, this image of the shepherd housing his sheep becomes this beautiful image of the church. That we, the flock, we, the sheep of our Lord Jesus, the good shepherd, that he keeps us in the church, not to restrain us, not, not to keep us tied up, but to protect us. My dear young brothers and sisters, young people who are here today, do not leave the church. This is the, this is the means of, of protection. This is the means of salvation, the means of protection that our Lord Jesus wants over all of us. So the gate or the door be, is an image that God uses throughout all of Scripture. He uses an image of a gate. Think about the ark the ark that Noah builds. So Noah builds this ark, right? And I can go through, I can go through like 50 different images of, of gates or doors. I just don't have that kind of time. People, even after 10 o'clock mass, kept coming up with other ones. Think about the ark, the ark that Noah builds. Uh, Genesis 7, everybody is saved through entering through the door, the gate of the ark. Genesis 7, 1, go read it. And so uh, John, John 10 we just heard, I am the gate and anyone who enters here will be saved, just like Noah's family. Noah brings them to salvation, his family and these animals. The Passover door, we know the story of Passover. God asks in it, for the Jews to be released from captivity in Egypt and that they will, he will strike down the firstborn. What does he do? He asks for the blood of the lamb to be put where? Over the door, over the doorpost. And anyone who is in the house, through the door, through the gate, is saved when the angel of death passes over, but it's Jesus' blood, the Lamb of God, that brings us real salvation from the angel of death. And so the gates and doors of the temple, Solomon builds the temple, and he builds the Holy of Holies, and, and there are gateways and doors that you have to enter to get to the Holy of Holies, and only the high priest was able to enter through the door and to offer sacrifice to God. And it was only there that and then the, the, this blood of the lamb, of a, a literal lamb, brings expiation for sins. But it is Jesus Christ who is the high priest, he who is the lamb, he who is one of the sheep himself, and who is the good shepherd. So it is the cross then. It is the cross on Good Friday that becomes for us the real gateway, the doorway to heaven. As Jesus lays down his life, it is in our good shepherd, who is the Lamb of God, who lays down his life for his sheep. But it gets better. There's one more gate, and that's the gate of the tomb. Jesus is taken down from the cross and he's thrown into a hewn rock, a cave, and a stone rolled over it. Mary Magdalene and the rest, they go to the tomb and the rock, the tomb is opened up. The gateway to eternal life is given to those who believe in Jesus. Jesus, the good shepherd, has risen from the dead. And that means now that our access to him is available through the gateway of the cross, through the gateway of the resurrection and the empty tomb, we have access to Jesus. And so Jesus speaks throughout all of his life about the gate, about the door. Peter, he says to Peter, um, these are the keys of the kingdom and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it, against the church. The gates of hell are fighting against the gates of heaven, but they will never prevail. Jesus says in Matthew 7, he says, enter through the narrow gate. 
For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to perdition, leads to destruction, leads to hell. Many enter through that wide gate, but small and narrow is the gate, the road that leads to life, eternal life, and only a few find it. The church isn't a means of restriction. God's laying down his life at the gateway, at the, at the entrance of the pen, isn't to keep us away from something, but to keep us protected in his fold. Jesus, our shepherd, lays down his life for his flock. The Christian life is to follow the good shepherd's voice, to allow him to protect us, to allow ourselves to be led by him, to be nurtured by him, to be nourished by him, so that when we're fearful, when, when, we're, when we're afraid of what's going on in our own lives or the world, it's the voice of the shepherd that comforts us through the sacred scriptures, through our prayer, through the voice of Holy Church, through our reception of the Holy Eucharist. When we're alone, when we feel abandoned, our shepherd is with us. And he promises that he will not leave us orphans, but that he will protect us. When we're wayward in our sin, when we're wayward, abandoned, and, and, and alone, it is the shepherd who leads us back to the sheepfold by putting him, putting us ourselves on his shoulders and leading us back into his mercy. Jesus says, I am the gate and anyone who enters through it will be saved. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way home except through him. In John 10.10, 10, again, Jesus said that he is abundant life. Abundant life is to be given to all of us. Our good shepherd has conquered the grave. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he wants to give us nourishment and to lead us and protect us. And let's allow ourselves to be led, protected, and nourished by him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.